boys and girls. Students, this is our first lesson of Module 2 on Similarity in Triangles called Projecting and Scaling. <clears throat> Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Malcolm X. In the first quadrant of your math journal, write down your daily learning targets. 2.1, I can find proportional relationships to determine if one figure is a scale factor of another figure. And 2.2, I can determine if one figure is a dilation of another figure using a scale factor. In quadrant two of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. We reviewed how to uh, find quotients of mixed numbers. So for six and one fourth divided by two, I can turn that into a improper fraction. Six times four is 24, plus one is 25 over four, and then multiply by one over two the opposite operation. Then we experimented by taking an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and having it each time. And what we discovered is that if we draw a diagonal through all five of them, they don't all go through the corners, which means they're not all similar. So the steps that we took, first of all, is to measure the scaled copies measure those rectangles that are not scaled copies, and then what did we notice? When we stack the corresponding copies together and draw each diagonal, stacking them from smallest to largest, we can see that three of them were similar and the other two were similar to each other. So to synthesize, you are going to study a new kind of transformation to be added to this list from previous work on translations, rotations, and reflections, this new kind of transformation makes scaled copies and is called a dilation. A dilation has a center of dilation, the common vertex for the rectangles in each stack, and a scale factor, 4, for example, from rectangle E to rectangle A. Different choices of scale factor give scaled copies of different sizes. For example, rectangle C uses a scale factor of 2 applied to rectangle E. Look at the image of the circular grid. We also call this the polar grid. What do you notice? What do you wonder? So some guiding questions to help us through. Do the circles have the same center? Yes. Number two, is the center of the circles where the lines meet? Yes. Why are there four lines meeting in the center? Now I talked about this in terms of these four diagonal lines. And I considered that these two, this horizontal and this vertical, can be compared to our axes on the coordinate plane, our y and our x direction. Is the distance between the consecutive circles the same? We experimented with this by drawing segments from, each, uh, from the center to each radius, and then from that circle edge to the next radius, and discovered that they are the same distance. How many pieces is each circle divided into? And if we take this smallest circle, we can divide it into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2, which is 12 equal pieces of pi. It doesn't matter the size, so small, medium, large, extra large, if we're thinking about pizza, they still have the same number of slices. So to synthesize, the circles share the same center. The center of the circles is the point where the lines meet. And the distance from one circle to the next is always the same, which means the radius of each successive circle is one unit more than its predecessor, or the pre-image, the one that came before it. A great applet to use here explores scale factors using that circular grid with a center of dilation at point P, and then engage in this activity in which we found that the measurements for A, B, C, and D, all were 2 and 6, respectively. You want to draw four points on the smaller circle using the point and object tool, on the object tool. Draw the rays from point P through each of those four points by selecting the ray tool, then point P, and then the second point. Mark the intersection points of the rays in circle D by selecting the intersect tool and clicking on the point of intersection, and then complete this table, which we did. The center of dilation is point P, 
what is the scale factor that takes the smaller circle to the larger circle. And indeed, we discovered that if we're talking about smaller to larger, we're actually taking 6 and dividing by 2, which gives us 3. 3 is larger than 1, so it's getting larger. If we did 2 divided by 6, which would give us 1 third simplified, that's less than 1, which would mean that I'm going from a larger shape to a dilated smaller shape. In your math journal, using colors and tools, take these notes to make the, and use these colors and tools to make the process more meaningful to you. There are two academic vocabulary terms that we are formalizing today, the center of dilation. The center of dilation is a fixed point on the plane. It is a starting point for which we measure distances in a dilation. In this diagram, point P is the center of the dilation. That's right over here. Dilation goes along with this image to the left. A dilation is a transformation in which each point on a figure moves along a line and changes its distance from a fixed point. The fixed point is the center of dilation. All of the original distances are multiplied by the same scale factor. For example, triangle DEF, DEF is a dilation of triangle ABC. The fixed center point is point O, and the scale factor is 3. If I measure this distance, 0 to B, that distance, if I take a total of three of those, one, two, three, that would get me to E. And so that's, therefore, the scale factor is three. This means that every point of triangle DEF is also three times as far from O as every corresponding point of triangle ABC. Using the applet, analyze what happens as you dilate points on a polygon. So this is a quadrilateral dilations, act one. It gives us, uh, several steps here and some things to think about as you go through this. I'm going to click on this briefly to show you that just because we don't have those rays anymore extending from the point of dilation or the center of dilation, I can use the rays to extend them to each of those vertices. By doing that, I can intersect and determine the dilated figure. In quadrilateral dilation act two, we notice that there are no rays in here. You have to draw them yourself. It actually shows you one uh, done for you. And this time you're going from the larger one to a dilated image that's smaller. In this case, this would be one third the size to A. And then in quadrant three of your math journal, for our cool down, we self-assessed by examining this polar coordinate system and looking at the distance from the center of dilation, P, to A versus P to B. Dilate A using point P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of three. So if I take that as scale factor of three, it would land right here because it's three times as far away as A is from P. Dilating B using P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 2, because it's already two units away from that center of dilation, then multiplying that by a factor of 2 will give us 4, which B prime would lo be located right there on the red dot. So in quadrant 4 of your math journal, reflect on your progress in mastering today's learning targets, rate your self-confidence, and explain why you gave yourself that score. So again, hopefully we're still not at a level 1, uh, this presentation and uh, engaging in the process got us to a level two. Now going back and experimenting, learning by doing with the applets, with Khan Academy, reviewing your notes will help us get to level three. I've assigned 10 Khan Academy assignments, uh, a combination of videos and exercises for you to complete as your palette of problems, and then your math lab, make sure that you're completing all four quadrants and completing the formal notes as evidence of using your SMPs during the lesson. Be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. And be kind to one another. Have a great day.